I'm going to teach you how to make a moving part in Roblox Studio, and I'm also going to teach you how to make a dash ability with that. So let's get started. First of all, let me show you the basic physics system in Roblox and how to make a part actually move. So if we insert a new part into workspace, and we can actually scale this up to whatever we want. Now this doesn't involve any scripting, but it gets a lot better when you script, so make sure you pay attention here. What we're going to do is just change the color part, scale it up, you know, the usual. Then we're going to run the game and we're going to click on the part. Then now that we have the part selected, we're going to scroll down in the properties window and we're just going to change the velocity of it. So down here we see assembly linear velocity and assembly angular velocity. Now if we change the linear velocity uh, and we change like the Z axis right here to 10, as you can see, it makes the part move a little bit. But if we change it like 100, as you can see, it just launches it. So let's change the angular velocity to something like 100. And as you can see, it spins like crazy. So this is how you change the actual movement of the part. Uh, now, velocity basically is like the direction that a object is moving. And along with it has direction and magnitude. So if you don't know what that is, basically magnitude is the scale, uh, like the size of the direction. We'll get into that more. Don't even worry about that. But if we change the linear velocity right here and we change it to like 10, it moves up a little bit. And if we change it to 100, it jumps up in the air. And as you can see, this is really cool. Uh, we can change the velocity to like 100 on the Z. And it makes it dash. Like it seems like it's dashing a little bit. And this is really cool. This is how we're going to make a dash ability actually work. But before we can do that, we also need to learn one other thing. Uh, let's go ahead and create an attachment in this part. And also we're going to create a linear velocity. Now what this linear velocity object actually does is it does exactly what we did with the velocity before, just automatically. So we don't have to type it in. So if we set the attachment zero on the linear velocity to this attachment, and then we set the max force to like 99999, so it has no limits. And then we just change the vector velocity right here. This will automatically set the velocity to that. And also it won't like, it won't just like go back to normal. It will last like this velocity will just be constant. So let's set this to like one, just so we know that it's actually we'll change it like 16. So it's the same speed as a player. And as you can see, it's actually going the same speed as a player would just in this direction. And this is really cool. We have a moving part here. And if we put something in front of it, it's just going to barrel through it like that. And that's really cool. That's literally what we need to make a dash ability. So now that we have these, like we have this in mind, we can just keep this here. It doesn't matter. Now let's go ahead and make a dash ability actually work. So in starter player, I'm going to go into starter player scripts and add a local script. And this will control the dashing, so I'll just name it dash. Then there are a couple things that we need to do. So we need to get the user input service. So local user input service equals game get service user input service, just like this. We also want to get the player service to get the local player. So we'll do game.players. And then we can just go ahead and get the player. So local player equals players dot local player. Now, if we just go in here and we just print hello world, and we can actually see that this is working when we press play. So if we just load in here, as you can see, it says hello world right here in the output. And also we're getting hit by this block. Awesome. So now that we know the script's working and it's actually in certain player scripts, everything's like no errors, that's good. Now what we want to do is make a function for dashing. So we'll just make a function for dashing like this. And we need to have a way to call this. So what we're going to do is use user input service, the service that we got up here. And we're going to connect the input began event. Now this event will run whenever somebody clicked a button or whenever you like click anything or just like move your mouse or something. This will always run. So this will be the input object right here. And then we'll have game process. So these right here, uh, let me just explain this. So here's what we're actually doing. I created a function for dashing. So this is like code that will be ran when we want to dash. Uh, it's not being used yet. Then right here, we have the input began 
event and we're connecting a function to whenever this event uh, runs. So whenever an input has been like pressed on your keyboard, uh, it will fire this code right here. And we have these parameters. We have an input object and a game processed event. Uh, and what this will tell us is this, we can just change this to is typing. This basically is just like if they're typing or not. And then input object, this is just like the key code and stuff. Well, I'll show you how to use that. But now that we have this code right here, we're just going to print input began just to know that this code is working. So if you press play, and then we click, as you can see, it says input began. And if we press like E or F on our keyboard, as you can see, it's also running. Perfect. That's all we need. Now we can actually check if the input object dot key code is equal to enum dot key code dot, let's say E. And now this code right here is checking if we pressed E. So if we pressed E, then we'll print pressed E. But we already know that this will work. So what we're going to do is also go up here and press and type if not is typing. So if we're not typing, then uh, actually, no, if we are typing, then we want to return. We just want to like stop here and don't do anything else because we don't want to run the dash if they are typing that's just like not good okay awesome and then if the uh, key codes e then we'll just run the dash function right here and we'll print dashed up here awesome so now if we press play we can go right here into the game and now if we press e as you can see it says dashed awesome that means we are working and if we press any other keys it's not typing any code if we type E in chat, as you can see, it's also not firing. Only when we press E out of chat. This code right here is really basic, and it's all we need to do to make the basic input system. Okay. Now, in the dash function, we actually want to change the velocity of our character. So let's get the character by doing local character equals player dot character, and this will get the player's character. Then we also want to get the humanoid root part. So local root equals character and character find for child humanoid root part. Now the reason we're typing character and is because this right here is checking if the character even exists. So the character exists and character find for child humanoid root part. So basically if the character exists, then we'll find the root part. Otherwise this will just be empty. Okay. Then we'll type if root, then we'll just do root apply impulse. And this is going to apply a velocity to the root like really quickly. And we just want to get the impulse. So local impulse equals whatever we're going to do. So let's just go ahead and get a few things first. So for the impulse, we're going to need direction and we're going to need magnitude. And that's how we get the velocity for it. Now, I know these are a lot of big words, but just stay with me here. It'll make a lot more sense. So let's get the direction, first of all. So to get the direction of the root, like the direction that the character is facing, we just want to do root.cframe.lookVector. And this will be direction of the character, or the direction that the character is facing. Okay. And then we want to get the magnitude, or like the scale that uh, we're going to be applying the impulse in. So local magnitude will just be like 100, right? And we can even put this up here. Okay. And then we can just do direction times magnitude. Okay. But we also want to get the mass of the root. So local mass equals root dot assembly mass. And then we will also want to times it by mass. So what we're doing here is just getting the direction, giving it this magnitude, and then also we want to times it by mass. Otherwise, it's not even going to move the character. Now, if we press play, we can actually test out this dashing and it should work. So if we just press E, as you can see, it does actually work. Might be a little hard to tell, but we are dashing. It is a lot easier to tell if we're in the air like this. And yeah, we are just changing our velocity. And this is a basic dash system. 
So we can also give it a cooldown. If we do this, local cooldown equals, and we'll just set this to like 0 0.5 seconds. Okay. And local on cooldown equals false. Okay. And then right here in the dash code, we can just do if on cooldown, then return end. So basically, if we're on cooldown, we're just going to break the code right there. We don't want to run it. And we want to set on cooldown to true. And then down here, we'll just task.delay cooldown. And then we'll create a function right here. And we'll just do on cooldown equals false. So right here, wait 0 0.5 seconds, then set cooldown to false. And right here, we're setting cooldown to true. Uh, but we don't actually want to set cooldown to true right here, only right here, if we're actually running the code. Otherwise, it's not even going to work. Okay. Awesome. Now we can go ahead and press play. And we'll have a 0.5 second cooldown, so we can't just spam it. And awesome, it's working. We can even set the cooldown to like 1. And it'll be a lot uh, longer. Now this is actually really cool. Uh, it's just a basic velocity changing thing. Oop. And we can just dash onto this. It's really cool. Awesome. Now, the reason I did this, just to show you guys the dashing thing with the regular impulses, this is just uh, to make like, you know, a regular impulse system. But if you want to make something that lasts longer, such as like the linear velocity here, we can also do that here. So let's go ahead and right click and duplicate this script and just disable that. And then in this script, I'm going to use a linear velocity object, which will be a lot better. Because what we're actually going to do is we're going to change the velocity at a longer period of time. Because impulses last for like a fraction of the second. So we want to do something longer. So up here we're just going to do linear velocity equals instance.new linear velocity. Linear velocity dot attachment zero equals instance.new attachment. And then we'll do linear velocity dot velocity constraint mode. Or no, not velocity, relative to equals enum dot actuator relative to attachment zero. And this will be actually a lot cooler. Uh, we're going to set, and that, that's actually all we need right now. And then instead of applying the impulse right here, what we're going to do is get rid of this code right here. And instead we're going to do linear velocity dot parent equals root. Linear velocity dot attachment zero dot parent equals root. And then after the cooldown set and done, we're just going to do linear velocity dot parent equals no and linear velocity dot attachment zero dot parent equals no. Okay. And we're also going to set the linear velocity dot velocity or vector velocity to direction times magnitude dot mass. And this code right here is the exact same as our other one, except this one is with the linear velocity. So I'll just name that linear velocity dash. Now if we go ahead and press play, and if we press E, uh, we have an issue here, attempt to index nil with parent. That's just because um, it's like setting it to nil up here, and we need to actually like set it to something. So I'll set this to workspace, I guess. Actually, no, we'll just set this to the player. And we'll set this to the player, and the attachment can just be nil. Uh, we have another issue here. Uh, line 30, attachment 0 dot parent. Uh, okay, let's just set this. We actually don't need to set the, we don't need to make a new attachment because there we can just use the one that's in the character. So what we'll do is linear velocity dot attachment 0 equals root Feinberg-Schild and I think it's like root rig attachment or something. So let's find that. Uh, it's right here. 
root attachment and there's also root rig but we'll just do root attachment find for shell root attachment awesome so this should work now uh if we press e oh yeah i think we forgot to set the max force also so let's go ahead and change that max force equals not that huge let's try this now it should work uh yeah it, it worked a little bit uh too well so we kind of went flying let's go ahead and try that again okay now it works a lot better uh except with that attachment it's kind of weird so we should probably use a different attachment uh if we open a rig right here as you can see we have the root rig attachment and the root attachment I think one of them's facing a different way. So if we just use local. Um, no, I think we just have to give it like a different type of velocity. So instead of doing this right here, uh, where we set to the C frame look vector of the root part, let's just get the attachment. So local attachment equals that. The attachment down here will be the attachment. And we'll just do attachment dot c frame dot look vector, and that will be the exact same, except we're not using the root. And as you can see, that works a lot better. Awesome! Now we can just launch ourselves. That's really cool. And if we set the cooldown to like zero point twenty five, it will last way less too. So if we just press e as you can see it's like way shorter yeah that's it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed these scripts will be in the description down below and i'll see you guys in the next video peace